Hi, welcome to The Day with Kay. My name is Kayla and in this video, I'm just gonna be talking to you about my walk with Christ this year and how he kind of showed me that I should be staying home next year and what that looks like. So if you don't know and you're new to this channel, I am or was formerly a sixth grade ELA teacher. It was my first year last year and it was something that I worked my butt off to get to, to that point. But right now we're gonna get right into the decision to not return next year and to stay home with my kids and how God kind of showed me that and kind of changed my desires for this next year. So I am going to be looking down um, throughout the video because I'm going to be looking on my iPad. Well, throughout this year when I felt that God was leading me something, he was telling me something, I would write it down on, on paper or I would write it down in my notes. My main point in this video is to show you what God did in my life. It's not to say that all women need to be staying home. That is something that God needs to lead you in the decision, on, and that's your decision to make. If he's leading you to that and if you're want, willing to follow him, but if um, he's calling you to work right now, then that might be it. But I just wanted to share my journey and my journey to um, staying home next year. So I wanna first start off by saying I love teaching. This I know for a fact that this is what I'm called to do for the rest of my life. It's I did not walk away or choose to stay home next year because I didn't love it. I know a lot of people enter the educational field and they just realize this is not for me, but I love kids. I love working with students. I love working with kids. They are hilarious. Um, this fully, this whole year was perfect. I um, am actually gonna, I'm actually going to show you guys the clip of me right after I had the interview with my job. Okay, so I just got out of my first interview, um, teaching interview, and I'm super excited. I really think I did really good. Um, I'm gonna look so like greasy, but I think I did really good. Um, I, like before I went in, I um, was like just sitting in the car, just praying and like repeating Isaiah 41 and nine over and over. And I really know that God was with me. He was protecting me. He's keeping my nerves like down. And so that was really helpful. Um, but yeah, I think I did really good. I hope I get this position. Um, it's about 30 minutes out from where I am just got our apartment at, but that's okay. I'm excited. Now I'm about to go off to work to um, work. Okay, see you guys. Okay, so that video was taken right after I had my interview with my principal and it was a lot of other staff members there but I just, I felt like this was where I wanted to be and God gave me that job and I loved it, absolutely loved it. I love my students, I love my coworkers, the building, the community, everything about it, I loved it. Now I'm gonna get into the things that were difficult this year. In my past, I was a preschool teacher and so that gave me, that just opened the door for me and, it, and I was able to work with people that I loved working with, work with little kids, but also it gave me the opportunity to work at a place that my kids were going. But when I moved to Texas, I had um, my oldest two were in second grade and kindergarten. My youngest, however, is just turned three and she's still in daycare. I had to take her to daycare when me and my husband start working this year. And that took a toll on me because I felt such mom guilt about that. And mom guilt is so, so real. And it, it weighed on me heavily because usually if i'm dropping them off at daycare i'm there and i'm able to see them go in their classroom whenever i want to see them when i went home they went home with me and i knew the workers and i knew where they were surrounded it was a christian preschool i loved it but here um it was very difficult we had to switch their their both of my kids daycares and they ended up going to separate daycares because it was it was just a hot mess um and that was really hard the first day i had to drop her off i had to leave home at like 6 6 30 in the morning she was there by 6 50 and i wasn't able to pick her up until about five o'clock or 5 30 ish and that was very very hard it was about almost 11 hour days 11 10 hour days and um that was very hard it's, it's very very hard dropping your kid off and you're like, I could be staying home with them instead of teaching these other kids. It, it just feel, it, it, it's very, it was very difficult. Another challenge that I had was when my kids were sick and they needed me at home, I felt that tension. And I felt that my job needed me, but my kids needed me. And I needed to be two places at once, but I could only be one place. So that was very difficult for me. Um, that was a challenge that I had all year long. 
especially with COVID going on, I felt that guilt and I felt bad telling my coworkers, hey, can you get, can you give this, these sub plans to the sub? Can you, I can't be there today. Or I felt bad for my kids because I'm like, I shouldn't feel bad having to be home with you. Like I'm your mom, you know what I mean? So that was very difficult. There was that tension um, of just being needed. Um, another balance issue that kind of happened was I, when I got home, I was beat. I was tired. I was tired. I had to deal with 11, 12 year olds, some 10 year olds um, throughout the whole day. When I got home, I just want to sleep. I don't feel like cooking. I don't feel like cleaning, you know, and that wasn't fair to my family. It wasn't fair to when my kids get home, they want to hang out with me. It wasn't fair to God. Like he blessed me with his home. He blessed me with these kids and a husband and I, sh I need to be there for them. And I wasn't there for them. And um, I felt that and I felt that guilt as well. And I'm giving my 100% at work, but I, I wasn't able to do it at home. Um, it wasn't that I wasn't able, it's just that I was too tired, I didn't feel like it. So that weighed on me as well. I'm going to actually insert a clip from my f the end of the first six weeks that I had and just kind of, I talk about this a little bit and just the challenges of that work-life balance. Good morning, y'all. Today is officially the last day of my first six weeks as a teacher. Um, we don't have, we technically don't have school today. I have professional development today, but um, yesterday was our last day with the kids before report cards are due. And so, yeah, I'm just excited to like finish this part off. It's been so difficult, um, like just challenging, like the, this first six weeks, like I knew, like, I just didn't know how difficult being a teacher was. And then on top of that, balancing all this with being a mom and having three young kids is very, very hard. So yeah, that's just um, the summary so far. Um, okay, so now that we've gotten into how the school year kind of went for me again, I love my job. I love my kids, I love my family, but I was slowly starting to realize, you know what, I think I'm gonna have to choose one or the other because it's not really working out so i went in and i started to do bible study I, I really tried to focus back on being in the word more often in the morning and making sure i did that in the morning and what was crazy is i was taking notes and i started to flip back to a couple of pages before previous and i found these notes that i had taken back when i was living in washington around 2020 2021 no, 2020 for sure and it was on Titus 2 and it talked about women and their duties and I'm just going to go ahead and read a couple a little bit of these scriptures that point that were that stood out to me so Titus 2 3 older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior not slanders or slaves to much wine they are to teach what is good and so to train the young women to love their husbands and children to be self-controlled pure working at home kind and submissive to their own husbands that the word of God may not be reviled. That kind of, that's what stood out to me, um, just what young women are called to do. Again, conviction right there. I was like, wow, Lord, okay, I see you. Now, after I took those notes, you know when God is speaking to you and you're just like, mm, I mean, okay, but maybe I just, maybe I just, just so happened to read that. And yeah, I don't know how to explain it. Like you read something and it convicts you, but you try to de deny that it, it's convicting you. So that's kind of where I was at. I was like, okay, that was for that time. That wasn't for, like that word was, isn't for me now. I just so happened to flip over to it and open to it. But then two YouTubers that I enjoy watching from time to time are Alan Parr and Ruslan KD, I believe it is. Um, they both had within a week span talking about women should women work at home or not and i really respected the the way that they decided to go about talking about this topic because it wasn't just from their standpoint it was from ruslan's was from his standpoint and what they did as a family what him and his wife decided to do and then alan pars he actually brought on his wife and they talked it out and she gave her testimony about how she kind of walked that out and got tugging at her heart and she also spoke about that tension of needing to be at home and needing to be at work at the same time and so they talked about titus too and i was just like wow lord like really not like there's no coincidence about it there's no like oh it just so happenstance god is speaking to me and i knew that once i saw the notes once i saw the two youtube videos i knew that god was using titus 2 to really convict me and talk to me and tell me 
hey Kayla, maybe you need to slow down. Maybe you need to really think about staying home next year. Okay, so during this time, so after after I watched those both those videos, I really just thought, you know what, Lord, I, let your will be done. And that, when you say that, expect God to let his will be done. And, ma and make sure you are um, not expecting his will to match up with yours because it's probably not it's probably not because he is his mind is he is just so much better than us he 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 has better ideas better plans for us and so the plan that i have for my life is not gonna match up with his because i don't know what's best for me all the time he does at the same time that i asked his will to be done i stumbled upon this song called new wine by maverick city music and so i'm just going to read a couple of the lines and they just like so the lines are, um, make me a vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus bring new wine out of me. So that really just like hurt, like not hurt me, but it really spoke to me because when me and Jamari moved here, we had nothing. We spent all of our savings, most of our savings up within like the first month. We didn't have jobs lined up. We didn't know where we were sitting. We had nothing every single thing that we were that we ended up giving getting was a blessing was from god and so i knew that this job that i'm trying to hold on so tight to was a blessing it's god's it's not something that i just that i got on my own these kids my husband it's not something that i got on my own it's all a blessing and so again let his will be done so that is where i i slowly started thinking you know what or maybe I am called to stay home and I started bawling out tears let me tell you crying this was probably January time crying because I'm just like no like no I just got it I, I'm finally here I'm finally teaching and I just did not want to let it go so now we're at the the what is the word the compass of what I'm trying to get to which is my decision now I have to make a decision now am I staying home am i working and at the same time that i'm having these um this dilemma i get an email now this is information i've never told on my, or in my channel at all but i when before i moved from washington state to texas i passed all my exams to be a teacher but i also was admitted into the uh program for social work and those were the two career choices that i've always gone back and forth with do i want to do social work do i want to do teaching when I got to Texas, I decided to do teaching over social work. But for social work school, I decided to defer it for a year. Now, during the same time that I'm deciding whether to keep teaching, stay home, UH emails, emails me and says, you have until April to decide whether you're going to keep your spot or you're going to um, withdraw from the program. And so I'm like, okay, Lord, what do I do now? Do I stay home and do school or do I stay at work and just... In the pro not go to the program and so that was just it was more opportunities being thrown at me i'm like i don't know what to do. i don't know what to do so when i really when i don't know what to do i like to avoid making a choice so i just kind of sat on it and i was like you know what god will tell me what to do when it happens which i do believe god will tell me what to do but i was also just not being an active part in his plan i was just kind of laid back just waiting for him to tell me something um and so i want to say february march time I get COVID and I had to stay home from work. And I really truly believe that God used that time to show me what it would be like to be at home. I loved it. A part of Alan Parr's video that I talked about when he had his wife on the channel and they talked about um, her walk and decided to stay home via stay on mom. She talked about having time for your husband and being a support system and, and, and just having that energy and that want and that desire. When I had to stay home for COVID, I had the energy to say, hey, how was your day? Or um, talk to my kids when they got home or play with them. And usually when I got home from work, I never did. Like I was so tired, I was so exhausted. I just wanted to sleep. I, I didn't have time for or energy for a conversation. But during that week when I had to stay home for COVID, I was like, I'm yours. What do you need from me? Done. And so I think God really did use that. It was like a forced stay at home for me. And he used that to show me what it could be like. Obviously, it, would be, it wouldn't be all blissful when I'm a stay-at-home mom. But it, it was just giving me a glimpse of what it, it could possibly be like. After that, 
I still didn't know. I still didn't make a decision. I was like, I don't know, Laura. I don't, I don't know. And so I, um, I just didn't make a decision still. But what I did do was I talked to Jamari about it and he said, why don't you just apply to my job? His job, so I work here in Katy. Here is Houston. His job is on the other side in Baytown. So for the past like couple months, he's been driving about an hour and a half in traffic one way and an hour and a half back in traffic to go to work. And that has taken a whole, a huge toll. And so I was like, you know what? I'll just do that and let's see if that happens. But at the same time, I already told him, I don't know if that's gonna add more conflict because that's that wasn't my dilemma. My dilemma is either to stay home or to uh, stay at my job. I don't really think that moving to another school will help relieve any of that um, tension that I, I've been going through this past year. So nonetheless, I applied anyways and um, I just kind of waited to see what would happen with that. Okay, so also during this time, there's a lot happening. So during this time, I also took my PPR exam and I passed my PPR exam and Jamari was waiting on his results from his second time. During this time, I just was like, you know what, Lord, I need to write this down. I need to take notes and I need to say exactly how I'm feeling in this moment. And so I did. And so this note is very long, so beware, but I'm gonna read it to you. I'm gonna read most of it to you. I'm gonna skip a little bit, but I'm also gonna have it on the side so you can follow along. This is from May or March 11th, and it's worried about the future prayer. So for the past couple days, today is Friday, probably since Tuesday, I've been just going back and forth with myself on car rides about what I want to do in the future. I've been thinking, do I want to do social work? Because I, I am admitted in the program and I did defer to uh, for a year and now they're currently waiting. I have until April to give them back a notice of whether or not I will continue with the program. So also mind you, I'm using this the voice to talk, talk to text to speech um, accommodation app whatever it's called. And so a lot of this is, mm, not a lot of it, but you'll see some incorrect spelling or words or it's just weird. But anyways, let's go on. And then there's teaching that I actually enjoy doing. For right now, I do believe that I need to be home with my kids and it'll give me more time to work with Elena, uh, work with him and Carter, or Cam and Carter, but also give me time to do what I'm called to do, which is just take care of my home and I'll have time for me and not be overwhelmed and stressed out or stressed out. But then again, this happened last week, I rescheduled Cameron's doctor appointment because we missed it for March 21st. The person who was scheduling the appointment asked me, did I want it in the morning or afternoon? And I said morning because I had the intentions of spending the rest of the day at home, chilling, relaxing, you know what you do. Um, a couple days later, I get a call, but I'm in school at, and are at work, so I don't answer it. But later I hear the voicemail, it reads or it says that the same school that I applied for, which is Jamari school, which is, Oh, I just said that. One that Jamari works at is reaching out for an interview for March 21st at four o'clock. The timing of the interview and the day are perfect. I had already had plans on taking that day off for Cameron's doctor appointment. I scheduled his doctor appointment in the morning so I can have the rest of the day free. And the interview is perfectly at the end of the day where I would have enough time to drive down to Baytown, make it on time, and Jamari would, be just, would just be getting out of school so he would be able to watch the kids. I told Jamar about this and he seems excited, but I am hesitant because I don't know if this is just a test from God to see, okay, I'm gonna see if you, you're going to listen to what I've been calling you to do, which is what I believe he's, which is what I believe he's called me to do is to stay home, or are you going to mm, go after, I think I'm trying to say, go after opportunities that might help you financially or help you in the way that you think. Basically what I thought his will, will I, do his will or will I follow what I think is right? Now I told Jamari this and he says that he doesn't think it's a test. He thinks it's more of an opportunity possibly to be able to work at the same in the same area at the same school. I just don't know. I've spoken with two women at my school. I did not tell them that I have plans on staying home, but somehow in the conversations they've mentioned how they stayed home with their kids. One lady told me this maybe the first couple of uh, the first month of me teaching that she stayed home with her kids for a long time and they had to stay in apartments and they didn't have very much money but she said that she would not take that back for anything and there was and that it was all worth it the other lady who I spoke with mentioned staying home with her children for 10 years and she also said that she would not take that time away for anything and after 10 years she entered into teaching and she said by the time her kids were old enough to be able to do things on their own and not really need her as much as oh as much right away at home. 
Now I have not no intentions of staying over 10 years. My goal is to stay home at least for two years while Elena um, ways to enter public school. So I'm going to jump a little bit because I'm kind of being redundant of what I've already spoken to y'all about. Um, I mentioned how I talked to my mom and she tells me, okay, Kayla, if you do decide to stay home, I need you to actually be working on yourself. So you need to be in school or something. And then I tell her, wow, that's kind of crazy. Cause remember how I got into UH and they just emailed me about, okay, are you going to be in this program or are you not? So I told her about that. So at the very end, I just say, so long story short, I pray the Lord that I pray Lord that your will be done, that I give every anxious thought and worry to you and lay it out your feet, that I no longer worry about my future, about whether I will stay home or go to school. I pray that everything you have for me will be done and if you were speaking to me, I will listen, that you will calm the storm around me in which which may be my thoughts or the enemy's words that are trying to sleep or seep into my thoughts. I pray that your voice will be loud even if you're whispering or your voice will be loud in my ears because it will be the only voice I hear. Or I focus on you so that your children know your voice. I know, wait, what am I trying to say there? Oh, I, I don't know what I'm saying there. I know that I'm your child. I believe that I'm your child and I pray that when you speak, I will hear and I will know that the rest of it I let go of. May you provide us with a church home where we can grow in your kingdom, help others and serve you. May we be surrounded by other people seeking your kingdom with all their hearts. In Jesus name, amen. So that was my, me just writing down all my concerns, everything that's happened up to that point and letting it go and giving it to God. That was that note right there. Um, and mind you, it's very easy to say, you know what, Lord, I'm gonna give this to you. But every time you go back and re-worry about it, you're telling God, I'm taking this back. And that's what I found myself doing. And I had to continually say, I'm not going to worry about this. Every day I had to say, I'm not going to worry about this. God will, God's will be done. I'm just going to give it to him. And that was something I had to keep doing. I did talk to my mother-in-law on spring break about what was going on. And Jamari did get his results back and he did not pass. And he could only, he only had three chances to pass his PPR exam. After third chance, his, his position would be basically available for anyone else to take. And so he had one more chance. And she just told me, are you, are you going to believe what God is telling you? Or are you going to step out, like have faith and step out on what you believe he's telling you? Or are you just going to hold on to your job because you're at a standpoint where you really don't know if Jamari will have a job next year or what? And so I said, you know what? I believe, I strongly believe that God is telling me to stay home because it's just too many things that have happened. Too many conversations I've had, too many people who've talked to me about staying home, um, the YouTube videos I watched, my notes, my interview. That wasn't something that, um, it definitely could have been God ordained, but it wasn't something that um, I just felt God was leading me to. So I ended up not going to the interview and I decided um, after watching a sermon on Life Church, and I'm gonna go ahead and read those notes as well. I have a lot of notes, y'all. This is gonna be a long video. Um, the notes say, this was on March 13th. So my last notes were from March 11th. This one is from March 13th and it reads, what is God's way? God is trustworthy. I'm also gonna leave the video of the sermon below as well. God is trustworthy. Remember that he has been faithful before. Rent, when we first moved to Washington, confirmation to move to Texas, getting a job, apartment, car. Those are all examples of how I know that God has been faithful before. Um, God is faithful today. Our success is not dependent upon what we see, but on the presence of God in our situation. He is with us today. God will be faithful tomorrow. We know that God is in control of our life. Our story is already written. We just need to walk in, into what God is calling us to do. After I watched that sermon, after I talked to my mother-in-law, I just decided, you know what? God is, God's got me. I'm not about to worry about Jamari about to, uh, needing to pass his, PP, his last chance of this PPR exam. I'm not going to worry about what finances might look like next year. If God is calling me to stay home, he is going to provide for the rest. I do not need to stress about that. God, it, like that sermon really spoke to me and it was telling me God is with me. He has been with me before. He is with me today. He will be with me in the future. I'm not about to stress about it. So when I got back home from staying with my mother-in-law over spring break, I said, I'm going to put in my resignation. And I, I know that God's got me. I know it. I know it. So I talked to my principal and I let her know that I would be for sure resigning. And she gave me the papers that I needed to put in. I officially put in my, my resignation papers on April 6th. 
During that time, Jamari was not able to register to take his exam because he had to wait a certain amount of days from his last take he took. I think it was like 30 days he had to wait out. And so he was finally able to register for the exam on April 10th. I had already put in my resignation on April 6th. So, hey, you got to make it happen. We had a conversation. I said, baby boy, I put in my resignation. It's on you. You got to make it happen. Like God's going to do what he does. You need to do what you can do and God will do the rest because I have nothing else to do. I can't do anything else. So he registered for his exam on April 10th. He took his exam on April 13th and he got his results back on April 15th. And guess what? He passed. We were like, I mean, crazy excited because he needs that because he did not have any more chances. God is good. That, another God is good. So now mind you, this is like mid April. I have maybe a month, a month and a half left for my students. And when I put in the resignation, I was excited. I was like, yes, I get to stay home. I'm going to do this. And then as like May came around, I, I was so sad and heartbroken. And I'm just like, Lord, what, what is it? And so um, I'm going to read this note from May 11th. So the note says, this is the last note. The note says, I'm, you hold my hand. I'm beyond discouraged and sad. I had one of the best days at work with my students and coworkers. I had the star testing, then award ceremony. I got to see exactly all that I have been blessed with this year and it's scary and heartbreaking to let go of. Just thinking of never seeing these students again or even next year, thinking of not being, being at the school and growing with my coworkers. I expressed to Jamari this and began to cry uncontrollably. All I wanted to do was lay down, but Tasha's Co Tasha Cobb's song, You Know My Name, came to my mind. So I began to li listening to it, singing and worshiping. Then when she began, you hold my hand over and over. God brought it to my attention what he has spoken to me this week. And I began to give it all to God, acknowledging that he is speaking. Earlier this week, I went back to Jude and read this, the last, the, that last scripture. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you blameless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Then on Monday, the verse of the day was Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. It stood out to me because this was the exact verse I meditated on when I went in for my interview at the beginning of the year. When I first read this verse at the beginning of the week, I knew God was bringing this back on purpose, reminding me he is with me, bringing this year full circle. So again, if that doesn't make sense, what I was saying is on Monday, the beginning of this week, this was the verse of the week. And it was the exact same verse that I showed y'all at the beginning of this video that got, that I was meditating on when I took this interview. It's just craziness. Um, so I continue to read the chapter. So now we're back to Monday and I'm going on, on Isaiah 40, 41. I'm, I'm reading throughout the chapter to see what's, what's happening next. I can't just, I need more of this. So next couple of verses say, so I continue to read the chapter on Monday and took note of verse 41, 13. For I, the Lord, your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. And now he continues to bring it to my memory as I listen to the song. God holds my hand. He upholds me. He keeps me from falling. He is with me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to be fearful. No need to dismay. He knows my name. I trust him with my life. No fire can burn me. No battle can turn me. No mountain can stop me because he knows my name. I'm walking in his victory. His power lives within me. No giant can stop me because he holds my hand. Okay. Woo. Crazy. It's just craziness. Like, not crazy. It's just goodness. It's just faithfulness. God is so faithful. And I, this year has been a blessing. Let me tell you, a blessing. And it, it has been a challenge giving it up because I finally know that what I'm called to do, but I have to take a break for a season. And God is telling me, Kayla, I'm with you. I'm right next to you. I'm holding your hand. Like, don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Don't, don't look at from side to side, look right at me, follow me. And I'm with you. I got you. And Yes, I'm so sad. Yes, I'm so like heartbroken, but I'm I'm joyful. I know that God's got me. I know that when I do return to teaching, God willing, it will be at the same school or that I'll be able to at least see these students again. But if not, I know God has better for me. 
Um, this school was amazing and I loved it and I loved teaching and the, God is good. That's all I can say is God is good and he's taken care of us all the way up to here and he's going to keep taking care of us. And I just know for a fact that if you are seeking his kingdom, if you're seeking what he has for you, if you're seeking what he's willing to tell you or wanting to tell you, he will tell you he will make it known and if it's not your desire ask god god fix my desires help me to desire this help me to desire what you have for my life and he will get that there because like i tell you when he i had covid and i had to stay home i was like man this is nice mm, this is nice nice I, I was like, okay, I can do this. I want this. At the beginning of the year, you would never be able to tell me, Kelly, you're staying home next year. Mm -mm. But God fixed my heart and my desires to want to stay home. Although I want to be at work, I, I want to stay home. I want to build my home. I want to be there for my kids and my husband. And God helps me to see that. And so my prayer for y'all is to seek his kingdom, seek what he has for your life, and really ask God, um, Lord, let your will be done. Let your will be done in my life and help me to desire your will and he will he will let it happen he will so i hope you guys enjoyed this i know it was a bit long but i really wanted to share everything that god has shared with me this year and i hope it blesses you have a blessed day bye